This is um, I saw this quote courtesy of Mixmag via an Anna Christiansen, um, Anna Christensen, Christensen, not Christiansen, Christensen, um, interview via Mixmag, who I kind of saw briefly at Fabric. I'm pretty sure because I remember because I think her hair was dark before and now it's blonde, so I'm pretty sure that was her behind the decks slaying after Jeff Mills played. I'm pretty sure that was. But anyway, this quote here kind of piqued my interest, right? It says here, DJs being more genre fluid motivates producers to be more fearless. And I've been seeing this kind of um, conversation happening a lot on social, especially on Twitter. It feels like on Twitter, there's an entirely different conversation around um, dance music and DJs that then you get on like Instagram. It's a completely different sort of uh, battle over there. And there are these weird asinine battles, some of them legit, some of them not so legit, some of them boring, some of them not so boring. But one of the more interesting ones is hearing people talk about how hard it is to basically be a uh, non, what's that thing called? Be like a, like, it's, like, like this firm phrase says, a genre fluid DJ, right? A DJ that doesn't necessarily prescribe to one genre. Like when people have always ask me, oh, what do you play? I say, I just play music, innit? Like maybe because I've grown up in England and we don't really have that thing of like, being a specialist they, they do exist of course but in general people just want to mix whatever right they want to play whatever that's kind of how our pies always get down of course there are more specific raves that you could go to but people have the ability to you know in a techno set put on a house track that makes sense put on a drum and bass track that makes sense a jungle track that makes sense all these things can basically add to the overall tapestry of the sounds that you're trying to create when you're putting the mix together to just be kind of rigid in your sort of sound that you're playing and only play that sound just seems a little bit dull to me especially when people are paying good money to come and see you play and have a little bit of a boogie if they just wanted to hear you play the greatest hard dance mix or the, the greatest hard dance songs out now at the current moment they're just going to spotify and just hit shuffle but it's a bit more interesting if you can mix in some great pop tracks into that, mix in some hip hop into it. Like all that stuff is going to add, I think, to the overall experience. But I guess for DJs and artists, when you get to a certain level, you have to kind of, you're basically put in a position where you're forced to specialize. You're forced to basically say, this is the genre I play. This is what I'm going to put my hat on. Um, because that's the only way you're going to again get bigger and bigger bookings because your agent, that's how they end up getting paid, right? So the larger the booking they can get for you, the more percentage or the more, you know, they can take out based on that percentage. So maybe that's the reason why, or maybe it's just like a UK thing we've just spoiled here where most people who are proficient at DJing can play a decent set of most genres of music, right? Maybe not a full hour set, but maybe like a half an hour set. I think most people have the ability to do that in the UK because we've just grown up listening to loads of shit, watching loads of stuff, radio, all that sort of stuff. It kind of helps us to do whatever it may be do. So let's see if I can find this quote itself. It says genre fluid. Mm, genre. Duh, duh, duh. But, but, but. Yeah. There we go. Um, yeah. Um, it says breakbeat has come back into fashion again very true um, so that she, Anna, 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 Anastasia Christensen says the following I find lots of new generation DJs are way more genre fluid which is good I've been that from the very beginning there's definitely more focus on shifting beats and rhythm sounds that are not so predictable I think that allows artists to be fearless in what kind of music they release so it gives more confidence to the creativity we have today because I feel like there's always pressure to make the next dance banger but because DJs are also becoming more liberal with their choices it motivates producers to go more weird quirky and unconventional good point even though there's nothing unconventional about drum and bass as such the fact that the techno scene and the house scene are rushing more to those elements is exciting of course and i in general i, I don't know maybe again i'm spoiled but i remember when i was kind of growing up and getting into dance music kind of again one of my major kind of inspirations you know um francois kovokian um of course dj harvey dj hell early Sven Var, right? All these people were very kind of eclectic in their taste in music, in the stuff that they played, right? They'd go from playing Michael Jackson to like an obscure trance track in a song, like in a mix, like they'd play legitimately any anything that would basically fit. And then to go further on, you hear people like Ricardo Villalobos, another good example of it, who, you know, had a very specific way of playing minimal that was unlike anybody else. And it didn't just sound like minimal that everyone else was playing because it mixed loads of different stuff, like tribal, all these kind of things that is a very kind of clever way of kind of doing it and then of course growing up in london in general like i said um you have the privilege of going to parties where there is no set genre that they're playing 
because once you get there or even if they do say this is such set genre the dudes just go completely crazy once they get behind the decks and start playing whatever because they go off the energy of the crowd whether it's bashment reggae pop stuff r&b whatever they'll just play it because they know what's going to get the crowd kind of crunk and get excited then you go to places like berlin and stuff which i love but one of the major criticisms i have about it it is quite one note and it is quite segregated there are places that you can go to which are mostly in like the what's the kind of touristy area like uh is it prince lauerberg or that sort of area right you can go to those kind of areas and you can find clubs that will just play you know reggaeton or hip-hop or whatnot it may be a mate or wherever it is but they're nowhere near anywhere located next to the techno kind of underground clubs that exist and those people don't cross paths at all or if for lack of a better term they probably hate each other right because those people are maybe the kind of people the techno people would assume would be the ones that live in buying or something whatever it may be right so there's that kind of divide that exists so there is no kind of blending of scenes and you really have to decide you have to be quite intentional about where you want to go fitting in the music whereas in london you could pop into any place major club and hear you know many genres played out throughout the entire night even if it's a if, even if it's a club night that's been specifically curated in a certain way you'd hear there loads of different sounds on a continued basis which in general if you had then got the bug to start djing it would influence how you play and how you listen to music it wouldn't just be through just one year of like okay let me just keep this genre this bpm going again and again and again because it just feels boring to me after a while like all that hard techno stuff that everyone's playing now at the moment all the stuff you hear people playing that stuff like per places like possession it's just all samey right it's all it's all the same it's all really reductive it's all sounds really i won't say uninspired but it just sounds a little bit boring um you'd want a bit of a mix now i don't believe in the mix where you go crazy and you sort of play a set where it only appeals to you know the boys that are listening to you or it's kind of like a how do you call it um you don't play like a youth club set right a set where you're only kind of playing to your friends and not the whole entire room that of course i'm not really a big fan of but it does need to be more of an acceptance or more of a willingness or more of an encouragement from whoever it is whether it's the bookers whether it's the managers um the, the promoters to be like hey let's try and push these djs to play more open sets to play more genre fluid sets whatever it may be called maybe it, it requires you to let them play longer because it's difficult to be genre fluid if you're only playing for an hour right you get there and you've only got 50 minutes left because you got caught in traffic then by the time you start you've already on 48 minutes it's very difficult to kind of like play different sounds and go from different genres you just want to kick the bangers and make sure people dance so you get booked another time so i completely understand the pressures behind it but um interesting observation there from anastasia again maybe because she's european as well and she basically again she's not from berlin so maybe that can help but i think it's uh I think being general fluid is definitely one of the key things that you can learn in terms of kind of separating you or getting you kind of from being quite average to being okay really quickly. The idea that you can kind of blend genres and make it sound somewhat um, palatable, right? Um, it's definitely a way to go. Is definitely the way to 